are great. Welcome to Stupid Movies, episode 156. Where we watch them, so you can watch them too. Yes. Because this week you got to fucking watch them. Oh, them. man. This is, this is we a got great a, movie. We got a, a, an actually indie gem here, Holy folks. Balls, man. Watch it. Yeah. And Skip the review. Don't even sit, wait till you hear what we're watching. Just go watch it. Just do it. Just, just go, go, do it. Yep. Just go watch. Just... <laughs> right over there. <laughs> Come back! Oh, there oh, we go, we're back. Okay. And this week, we watched Volumes of Blood. Volumes of Blood. Volumes of Blood. Oh. Volumes of Blood. Oh. Volumes of Blood. Oh. Volumes of Blood. Volume Vol one. Volumes of Blood. <laughs> so this is from 2015. Nope. Not rated. Nope. 96 minutes long. Perfect length. Yeah. Um, and there's, it's an anthology, so it's, a, it's got... Different directors. It's got PJ Sparks, Jacob Belinsky, Nathan Milner. Starks. What'd I say? Sparks. PJ Starks. Yeah, get his name right. <laughs> John Muir and Lee Ververt. Vervort. Vervort. Something like that. Yeah. Starring Ronnie Jonah. PJ Starks. And Jim O'Rear. Oh. This uh, is brought to us from <laughs> Legless Corpse Films, and it was uh, an exclusive, uh, another exclusive from Horror Pack. Ah, so, Horror Pack fucking kills it, man. Horror Pack's the best. So this is an indie anthology with, what, five, four different stories and then like a wraparound and a half? <laughs> so the first episode is, uh, what, about a killer energy drink? Makes people's head explode. Yep. Yep. Second is about a ghost, typical kind of ghost story. Yep. Third is uh, kind of a prank gone wrong. Yep, yep. And the fourth is when a dead boyfriend comes back because he was summoned. Yep. And you left out the most important part, or the most interesting part of this. The wraparound? All of the stories and the wraparound, and the wraparound's wraparound, all take place in a library. In yep. the same library. So it's right. a single location movie. Single location, yep. Uh, <coughs> and then the wraparound kind of the end is kind of very self-aware where yep. it's actually the people making the movie making fun of, uh, it seems like, big budget stuff. Yeah. And, so the, the wraparound is for college students who are trying to come up with the ultimate urban legend. Right. And then it turns out that they are part of a movie about urban legends. Aha! So, yeah. well, sorry we spoiled the ending, but, but fuck you, go watch it anyway. It's still great. Yeah. What, what did we like about this movie? Uh, you, I left this off here, but I like kind of that has an, a little bit of an 80s vibe to it throughout. It does. It's not like an 80s throwback no. directly, but it's got a little it's bit of an 80s vibe. It's, 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 it's got like the best part of the 80s movies yeah. survived into this. It's, yeah. In fact, you said if they made an urban legend in the 80s, this is what it would probably yes. feel like. Yes. One thing, and we said this constantly throughout the movie, the camera work oh. is phenomenal. They had tracking shots. They had Steadicam. I love you, Steadicam operators. Drone they shots. had drone shots. The The whole movie was beautiful. Yeah, and keeping in mind that it is a lower budget indie flick. Yeah. Know? I, I mean, these were brought to us by, like, what, Kickstarter or Indiegogo kind of thing. This movie would have been beautiful in a theater. Oh, yeah. Like, can you imagine seeing this on a big screen? Yeah. It would have been amazing. Yeah, you know... It, it, Yes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> along with that production value, the lighting oh. was fantastic. Oh. Especially in like the the prank one, mm. the lighting in that was holy awesome. shit. I mean, in all of them, I mean, different colors, different light. It's awesome. Yes, it, I, it I was mean, beautiful, it just, and beautifully and, lit. Yeah. And the, unlike <laughs> us, <laughs> um, the cinematography along with the camera, oh. it was great. Man, there's like mm. there's shots that like would circle. You know, going a like going bit. around a person, yeah, and from you know distance shots, and uh, I like some of the effects, like especially in the prank one, yeah. when she woke up from the prank and it's kind of like <laughs> like mm -hmm. glitching out sort yep. of video. That was really cool. Uh, the ghost in the yep. ghost one that would like hyper speed move and yep. then like come to a complete stop. Shit like that, yeah. Was pro level, yeah, high quality shots. Very well it was done. Phenomenal. The sound along oh, was great. There, it the, sounded beautiful. Yeah, no clipping. It was all even. There's a few times where you could hear a little bit of background, like you know, ambiance. 
Yeah. It just added to the movie. Yeah, and it, yeah, exactly. It didn't stand out, you know, in a bad way or nothing. But mm. overall, it was solid. And, and, you know, with the sound, the music. Mm. Like, you could close your eyes and listen to this movie and know what was going on the whole yeah. way through between the music and the, the background effects and the words they were saying. It was so, so beautiful yeah. sounding. And it I was. keep saying beautiful, but fuck, man, this was a beautiful horror movie. Yeah. The, yeah, the score in this is very 80s-ish, kind of, there's, every story had a different score, yep. but it was all consistent and very creepy, and, and... And there was some great punk in it, too. There was. A couple yeah. of songs, and... Yeah, there was, there was a lot of, like, foreboding sounds. And, and you know what there wasn't? There wasn't any cheap, off-brand, heavy metal bullshit. I'm right. looking at you, Bill Zebub. Right. None of that was in this. Right. A score can make all the difference, and they nailed it. It was awesome. I loved it. It was fantastic. Go. Yep. You know, okay, so one thing, now that we're done whacking them off about how beautiful the movie was. Oh, it's foaming out the top. <laughs> it's on your beard. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, one thing that I really liked. Normally in an anthology, there's one story that stands out. Yeah. There's two stories that are pretty acceptable. Good. Yeah. And there's one story that's garbage. There was not a single garbage story no. in here. Oh, the atmosphere along with the score, um, you know, it just paired well together. Oh, the atmosphere and the setting, it was it was it was just that location was awesome. Yes. I went I kind of that, skipped over but That's we'll okay. Back. We'll come but yeah, back. yeah, you know, the the library was freaking fantastic. That library, first of all, is beautiful. I want to go visit. Uh, yeah. It was fantastic. And that the score paired with the atmosphere made it creepy, it felt tense, it felt uncomfortable, yes. you know, even when stuff wasn't really happening. There there were a few times there where both of us were kind of squirming back like, and forth ooh. a little bit, like, just because of how I tense guess. it was. It was like, ooh, this is, ooh, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? A little, little bubble trickling out of my butthole. Uh, oh. <laughs> Unlike our show, the acting was phenomenal. <laughs> Do we even act? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we act like children. <laughs> this is true. Yeah, the acting was very good Holy though, shit. for the most part. The pacing <laughs> <laughs> was pretty good. Unlike anthology. this show. <laughs> <laughs> anthology can be pretty hit or miss with pacing. Mm. This was pretty good. Each story, none of them really dragged. Um, the, a little bit towards the end, it kind of dragged just a little bit, just but not tiniest, only. Tiniest, just a smidge. Bit. And we think maybe because we ran out of copy and had to pee. So maybe we're like, okay, I just it. need to pee. I don't want to stop I, the I movie. Want, I want my coffee. I want to urinate. Even um, at the wraparound. The wraparound yeah. had good pacing, too. Yep. And sometimes with these sort of movies, that's where it can drag the most. Yep. Is the wraparound. The, 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 the beginning of the wraparound and the end of the wraparound. A lot of times those are the two spots where it's like, oh, come on. Just get over with it already. But not here. No. The the wraparound was a great movie by itself. It was. Yeah. Uh, the gore, I, I like the gore. No. There wasn't a ton. No. Um, yes, no. Kind of the end is where most of it hit, but I thought overall it was pretty good. The makeup effects were pretty decent. Yeah. That ending, holy yeah, shit. Yeah, the ending was badass. Woo! And that kind of leads up to, this, there's a second one that we'll probably hear do, uh, hear do soon. Next week. The makeup. I really like the makeup. Yeah. Especially on... The the one where the girl summoned her devil boyfriend. <laughs> oh yeah, the the dude look yeah as he um, progresses like because as the movie as that story goes along he gets worse and worse looking because he's dead. Some of the kills at the end were really good. You know the, oh, the head yeah. being stabbed in the spine being ripped the out. spine being ripped out the dude's head being smashed in the door. Yeah, it, I mean it was solid. Oh. You know there wasn't a, <laughs> there wasn't a ton but it was <laughs> I dug it for dislikes we had a hard time really. Oh. Which was a good thing. Yeah, that was it. Was really, really tough to come up with anything. So I had one super minor gripe: is there was in the head exploding, uh, the the energy drink that makes your head blow up. There was one bad CGI shot. This is how nitpicky we're getting. Throughout the whole movie, there was one bad CGI shot. Yeah, and it really stood out. Yeah. But it, it, it didn't take away, though, no. because the aftermath of it yep. was the really aftermath cool. was practical. made up for. It. Yeah, and it was super quick. Yeah, I mean, we're we're not talking like a ten minute long scene here. It was like what, maybe five seconds, yeah. six seconds. So it was a real quick, you know, boom, boom. It just it stood out. It stood out. Yep. Uh, other than that, uh, you know, as the acting overall was pretty good. There's a few uh, that weren't that great. That you know, just like eh. There were a couple that were just a little like eh. You could do better. Yeah. But really, no big deal. Um, there were no boobs in this movie. Except it, for in the book. It, except for in the book. Yeah. And those weren't even real. They were drawn. <laughs> right. And 
I didn't need it. Yeah. <coughs> it. It was fine without it. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. I didn't miss it. it. It wasn't even until we were looking for dislikes that I was like, wait a minute. Yeah. There were no boobs in this movie. <laughs> right. So, hey. Nudity and horror, they just kind of go together like peanut butter and mayonnaise. It should be done. You? <laughs> uh, and then, like we said, the pacing just a little bit towards the end yeah. drag just a smidge. <laughs> oh, I, I have one thing. I have one thing. Don't do shots of ranch. That's disgusting. <laughs> or if it was Miracle Whip, which oh. is what Rob thought it was, uh, don't do shots of Miracle Whip. That's also disgusting. Yeah, yucko. So what was your favorite story? Okay. That way I had stupid movies to pick the favorite, least favorite. So this works out well because between the two of us, we represent all four. <laughs> oh, shoot, you're right. Wow, I didn't even think of that. So my favorite one was the ghost story. Uh, first of all, it was shot... Beautifully. Mm. That was the one in black and white, isn't yes. it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So the whole thing was in black and white, which usually I'm like, this is pretentious, artsy bullshit. But it wasn't. No. There was not a single line of dialogue in the whole bit. Right. Uh, in that whole story. But the music and the makeup effects on the ghost, and it was just, oh, phenomenal. Yeah. And the stinger at the end. Yep. And then the fact that when they come to the wraparound, they even made fun of it. It's like, oh, insidious much? And it's like, yes, because that was totally an insidious shot there at the end. Right. That was my absolute favorite uh, yeah. of all of the stories. How about you? What was your favorite? Uh, my favorite was the prank one. Oh, prank yeah. Gone Wrong, uh, which was the third one. That, just, again, the library setting, the atmosphere of that, the score was awesome, the lighting, the, the um, camera work in that one. The, the camera glitching? Yeah. Yes. It was just awesome. And then, you know, even though you can't see it coming, it was still, I don't know. It was, it, 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 it was good. It, it was the tiniest bit telegraphed, but honestly, it was fine. It was perfectly fine. Yeah. It, it was almost more satisfying that you could kind of see what was going to happen. Right. Because it, it was like, oh, oh, this is what's going to happen. And you're like, oh, that is what happened. Yeah. It was good. It was just executed. Rare, that, yeah, that's my favorite. Yeah. Uh, my least favorite was just the Dead Boy from Me and Something Back one, but the fourth one. Yeah. It was a little bit slower. Um, and it was, I mean, it's just. I can see that. That's not really your, your type. It's not of, my thing. Yeah. Uh, not, that's not to say it was bad. It was still done really well. I liked it, but it which, was my least favorite out of all of them. Which is so funny because that was my second favorite. <laughs> right. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's like between that and the prank one, they're really, really neck and neck, but I think that might have been my second favorite one. Just because of the effects to it. Right. Whereas my least favorite was your second favorite was the one with the, the energy drink. Right. And there was nothing against it. It was still really, really good. It's like you were just, to me, that was the least good of four really, That's really good ones. Right. It's like, so when we say least favorite, man, if you're the director of one of those two bits, That's not... please don't think that we're saying they're bad. No, 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 no. Because no, these no, no, were no. all four, all four were solid good. fucking ones. Yeah. And I didn't count the wraparound as one of the ones we could have talked about, but fuck, the wraparound that was, fun was too. good. The whole thing, from start to finish, was just a, a great movie. It was executed well, it was simple, effective, fun, had gore, mm, all kinds of good. It was, it was just a good movie yeah. for me. Any flick, you know, as we know, we've done some crap on here. No. But this is definitely no. one of the better ones. We've never done garbage on this, movie, on this show before. <laughs> so... If you were going to rate this thing... I'm going to, because that's my job. That's what we do. <laughs> that's what we do on this here stupid movie show. That's true. <laughs> um, boy, I tell you what, this is an 8 out of 8. This is a solid... I, I sat, and I kept thinking, well, is that too high? And then I thought about how hard it was for us to find anything yeah. to nitpick about. Even Not just like, oh, I hated this. We couldn't even find things to nitpick about. Yeah. Makes it a perfect 8 out of 8. You have to watch this movie. You Definitely. absolutely... If you are a horror fan, you absolutely must watch this movie. I, as well, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 8. Because it's just, like we said, it's a fun movie from Man. start to finish. It's definitely worth checking out. If you have a horror pack, you probably already have it. Yep. If not, you can get it. Um, it's out there It's somewhere. out there. You can definitely yeah. find it. I would say hunt it down for yeah. sure. Um, this is absolutely <laughs> worth you buying. Definitely. Definitely. So, uh, we're going to shout out PJ uh, Starks, obviously. Starks with a T. Yes. Yep. I keep, Not with a P. <laughs> I keep the... Wasn't there a porn star, PJ Sparks, or... Uh, you would know that. Or I wouldn't know it. It just sounds like a porn name. I don't... I don't... 
care about their names. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care that they have names or that they're people. <laughs> We're going to say what's up to PJ Starks. Um, he was one of the main guys of this and, uh, you know. Kind of the driving force. Yeah, 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 yeah. So check him out. And speaking of that, they made a second movie. Um, Which we're going to talk about next week. Yep, and they are currently having Indiegogo to do the third one called Volumes of Blood Devil's Night. So if you've seen the first and second one and you like him, definitely go check that out. Uh, you just Google Volumes of Blood 3, Indiegogo will take you straight to the page. Um, check out the Facebook, they, they have links to all that. Go do that, support it, because, you know, they're, they've had a little bit of trouble trying to get the funding for this one. So they've opened it up a second time, go around, and they're really hoping to do it. So, yeah. you know, hop on there, support it, uh, you know, even just do the $25 one. You can get the uh, Blu-ray when it comes out in a poster. Support it! You know, indie horror, we need this stuff. Yeah. And we got to help these guys out. So check it out. Go support them. Support indie horror. If you want to support us, and just by looking at us, yeah, you can you can do that, too. And the best place to do that is on here. Yeah. Or at Facebook.com slash Stupid Movies. Or on Instagram at Stupid Movies. Mm -hmm. I'm on there at, at the Horror Punk at Dr. Sketch Turner. Mm -hmm. So check out PJ Starks. Check out Volumes of Blood. Go watch these now and support! Support! <laughs> oh, damn it. Hit the button, Rob. Oh, we can't, 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 we can't,